Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcoming back to the program one of my favorite guests for two reasons. Number one, he's intellectual about marketing. And number two, he has a good audio setup. Chris Hollis from Pure Market. Welcome back to the program. What's going on, Paul? Good to see you, man. Ah, I love when there's a nice crisp sound there as, as my former radio days. It sounds great, man. Awesome. We're going to talk about marketing today. Um, Chris has a real life story of how he just lost a customer, a potential customer, and he's going to vulnerably share that story because this has happened to me way too many times where we have low hanging fruit of a potential customer and we just don't seal the deal swiftly enough because we're preoccupied running our business. And lo and behold, that revenue goes to another company and all those potential customers that come from that customer goes out the window. So we're going to talk about that today. And I have a story to share as well, Chris. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but first and foremost, we want to say thank you to today's episode sponsor. That is our friends at Jobber. Jobber is the software that I use to organize and manage my business. Do you guys use Jobber too? Absolutely. We use, I mean, we tell everybody to use Jobber. Absolutely. From quoting a project to getting paid, Jobber software brings everything together to make projects easy to manage and customer experiences seamless, giving you more time back in your day and getting you paid faster. You can try Jobber for free at getjobber.com forward slash Paul. Again, that's getjobber.com forward slash Paul. So Chris, off air, you just told me the story. Can you share that again for everyone who didn't hear our preview there? Yeah, absolutely. To my own great shame, we had a guy reach out to us through our website and was asking about a handful of services. And he was in talks with someone else uh, at the same time, you know, kind of just shop around as everybody does, you know, you got to check prices and, you know, check services. And so he contacted us and then I gave him a call. We always do an initial phone conversation so we can learn about your company and see if, you know, we're a good fit for you. If this is a good first move for you or not, all kind of figure out where you are on the on the business spectrum. He had a decent business, you know. He was a couple of years in, never really did any marketing. He had built himself a free website on Squarespace or something like that, and so I made initial contact with him and told him, "Hey, here's the steps that I would take in your position, and you know, let's get you in contact with you know one of our web designers, and we'll go back and forth and and seal the deal." Somewhere between that conversation and the next email, it just kind of fell out of our line of sight for, for whatever reason. So he ended up going with a website from another company. And so I was just like, man, that's, you know, that's money straight out of my own pocket. That's, you know, another customer that, you know, we didn't make happy. He was really graceful about it. We ended up catching it later, but it was too late. Was he a green industry podcast listener? I don't think so. I'm trying to remember what specifically he did. I don't think he was. That would <laughs> that wouldn't have been good. Because a lot a lot a lot of y'all have been listening to me say you, you need to improve your raggedy website and you've been calling pure marketing. So I just want to make sure it wasn't my boys. We try to take special care of you guys. He ended up going with another company and then we're still kind of going back and forth a little bit to see if we're gonna do some pay-per-click stuff and some Google app management and that kind of thing. So we'll get you know part of the deal, uh hopefully. But anyway, it just kind of got me thinking I was like, you know, when it comes to websites and your online marketing, your online presence, if you don't get in front of people and you don't follow up well, you don't have a workflow for doing that, then you're going to miss opportunities if you're not staying in front of it and creating a, a seamless workflow where the communication is good, where people can jump in and just go ahead and get started. If you can get people started, 90% of the time, you're going you're gonna to convert those clients. You know, If you get them started on the onboarding process, and you can, you know, shock and wow with how you get with your communication and that kind of thing. You're gonna, you're probably gonna get them to convert. And so to drop it in the middle like that, it's kind of like someone hands you a hundred dollar bill and then you just put it in your pocket and then it falls out and you never see it again. And so when it comes to you know building your business online with a good website and everything, it's kind of the same thing. Like if if I don't have a website that is findable or don't have a website at all, then all that cash is just gonna go to the next guy because people are going to keep looking. You know, if they have a service they need, they're going to find it. So it's either going to be you, it's going to be somebody else. So by putting yourself at the front of the list, you know, most people don't go past the first page on Google anyway. So if you can get in those first you know, two or three options on, go on a Google search in your area, you're going to see a lot more leads come in. And then you need to perfect that communication workflow and get them on board as quickly as possible, because then it's a seamless process. They feel good about it. 
likely they'll continue to work with you over time. Yeah, and to share a success story, not not to pour acid on your wounds. It's okay. I deserve it a little bit. It's okay. It would have been 2014 maybe. I'm not exactly sure if it was 13 or 14, but I had a friend who was really, really smart with SEO and he got me ranking number three in Duluth, Georgia. Nice. The guy's very, 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 very smart. He was the web guy for an entrepreneur friend of mine that's opened multiple businesses and sold businesses. And this, this guy's crazy successful. I actually hope to bring him on the show one day. He's a big, big, big fish. But he saw me trying to build my lawn care company and thought it was cute and you know whatever. He's like, let me help you, man. Let me help you. And he, he didn't even charge me. No, just built me a world-class website. And I, I had more work than I knew what to do with. So I remember I was in my bedroom one day and my phone rings. It was California number. I saw it go through and I thought, well, that's weird. So I let it go to voicemail and then I immediately listened to the voicemail within like 30 seconds after he called me. I'm, I'm listening to voicemail and the guy's like, hey, I'm so-and-so from San Jose, California. And I got a, I got a home in, in Sugarloaf Country Club and whoever took care of our yard last year, they haven't even showed up this year. My neighbor just sent a picture and it's like, you know, crazy overgrown. We're getting letters from the HOA. We had no idea because we're not, we don't live there. It's just a, a golf vacation home. And he's like, I need someone to mow it immediately. I call him back. And I had no idea this guy was the CFO of a company that everyone's heard of. Okay. Like, you never know, man. You never know. Big money. Okay. I mean, this guy, I don't want to say his name because you could Google him. Big money. Okay. <laughs> just, just imagine having a, a, a vacation home in the night, one of the nicest neighborhoods in Atlanta at the time, it was a really, really nice neighborhood. We got a bunch of new ones popping up now. So anyway, I call him back, Chris. He said, Hey, thanks for calling me back. He said, I called two other companies and, you know, got the voicemails as well. He said, I need someone to cut my grass like immediately. And I said, I'm on it because I knew the street that he lived on. I was like, duh. So I was like, I'll be there in about 45 minutes. And he's like, really? And I was like, yeah. And of course I had Chuck in the truck pricing. So he's like, well, how much? I, I didn't even see it. I was like 50 bucks. <laughs> it was like a, at least a $300 job just to clean it up and then ongoing maintenance. But anyway, I was Johnny on the spot. I showed up, I, you know, triple cut it or whatever to get it, give it back down. I cut his yard. This is before job or so I PayPal me 50 bucks. Little did I know his next door neighbor was a defensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons. And because yeah. I had that yard in proximity over time, the defensive coordinator watched me do a sod installation for the other next door neighbor. So one next door neighbor was a guy named Joe. The other next door neighbor was the defense coordinator for Falcons. So I didn't know he was a defense coordinator, but he had watched us. We had done a huge remodel for Joe and we gutted his front yard. We put in all new Zoysia grass. It looked so nice. I mean, whew, it looked good. So the defensive coordinator watched us and, and realized we were meticulous and you know, attentive to detail. So eventually he hired us. And then because I started working for him, he referred me. Eventually I did the head coach. I did captain of the team, tons of players. And then, you know, it's just like a spider web. And then I do their neighbors. And just now I, you know, I'm friends with famous people because of that one follow up, even though I was ranking number three, which is incredible. But I, you know, I, I answered the call. And so if you're listening, I'm not. I'm not sharing this as a hero because I have way more stories that Chris just shared way more <laughs> where I dropped the ball and, and I had the deal. And, but let me ask you this, Chris, what could you have done different to secure this customer's relationship and job and revenue and, and, and done the total package for him? What should you have done? Yeah. So we've already made moves on, moves on that. So I kind of dissected that whole thing. And I was like, why did this, why did I let this happen? Right. So what I did is I went through back our communication workflow and I realized that the workflow was in place, but the reminders were not. So there was no notification of, hey, after 24, 48 hours a week or however long it's been since you've last heard from this person, if they haven't completed the workflow, then I get an alert saying, hey, reach out to this person and make sure everything's good. I actually just did it about an hour ago before uh, we jumped on air just to make sure like, I haven't missed an email, make sure that they haven't forgot to respond to that happens a lot. You know, you get ghosted a lot. Uh, people just don't call you back. You need to call those people back. Like if, if you're, if you don't hear back from them, it's not that they're necessarily just like not interested. It's probably that they just got busy and it just kind of fell off the side of the wagon and you just need to get them like call them back and say, Hey, I'm Chris with your marketing. Haven't heard back from you for about a week. Just wanted to make sure that you were still interested and we can get you on board into the next 
piece of the process. Since we've done that, there's been a couple of guys that I've called back and they say, oh yeah, sorry, I totally forgot. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that set up for XYZ time. And so just by putting in some notification uh, automations to remind me that, hey, they haven't completed this step or they haven't completed this step, how long that goes depends on what part of the process they in. So if they've committed and they've already, you know, written a deposit or whatever, then it's like, if we don't hear back from for a week, then we go ahead and call and say, hey, so we're, we're hung up on this. Let's, you know, what can we do to help you get to the next step? If it's an initial contact and we haven't reached out to them yet, like say they email, put an email two days ago, then I'm going to get a notification at nine o'clock in the morning. It says, call these people today and make sure that, you know, we hit that first step of the process. And so anytime, it's kind of like we talked about Google reviews last time I was on the show. Mm-hmm. If someone leaves you a bad Google review or you find just a broken piece of the system, go ahead and fix it. Mm-hmm. You know, just, you, you can't make everybody happy. You're going to, you're going to make people upset. You're, you're a human being. You're going to mess up sometimes. But how can we minimize those events as much as possible? And so like with a Google review, read it, see if there's any legitimacy to it. Even if only 5% of what they say is true, you need to address that 5% in the same way where, you know, I lost contact with this guy somewhere in the middle of trying to get him onboarded. I need to fix that one piece of a, you know, six step onboarding process to make sure that doesn't happen again. Cause you know, that happens 10 times over the course of a year. If you get hundreds of you know, requests a year, that one job, like you said, might be the next job that takes you to the next level because you never know who knows who, right? Someone's always watching you. Someone's always paying attention. So it's worth putting in the hour to fix that five second problem, right? Because yeah. then you don't have to worry about it again. That's so good. I'll leave the gentleman anonymous. I was just doing a call with a guy and he is in the weeds on a job that he's maybe going to make a little bit of money on, but it's just, uh, he, he made a mistake. He, he underbid a job. Mm, that's and, right. and now I've been, t- you know, he's a younger fellow and I, I was teaching him about integrity and reiterating. He knows about it, but I was like, you got to just suck it up and finish the job. And, and just like you were making bank on it, just make it look as great as you can. And the problem is he's having other work that he's losing, not necessarily slipping through the cracks, but he's like, I can't get to it because he's mm-hmm. he's doing his maintenance. When he's not doing his maintenance, he's on this other job. And he's like, dude, I'm not making any money. Just he's in a he's in a mess. But I was like, well, you're never gonna make this mistake again, are you? No, right. Because you know, he just he 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 didn't know what he's doing when he sent the bid and he bit off a little bit more than he could chew. And so I think even you know, the the work that we take on, once we stretch ourselves thin, it's like a spiral out of control because not only are you overstretched in your work capacity, but you're missing out on on good jobs. I'm sure that would have been a wonderful client for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, to, to that guy's situation, the most important client is the one right in front of you. You know, like you have a voicemail, it's the one who's sitting right in front of you. So just take care of them, do the best you can. If you're gonna get super hosed, I'm talking like, you know, four or five figures hosed, then you probably could go back and say, Hey, I really sorry amount of material, whatever it is way more expensive than it was when I first quoted it or whatever the truth is. Don't lie about it. But wherever the mm-hmm. truth matters, like I just super underbid it. Odds are they got two or 300 other bids that are significantly higher than yours. And they're like, okay, we can probably work a little bit, but if they won't, then, you know, stick with, with, with integrity, finish it as best you can. If you have to get a bad rap out of it because it's, you know, 10 grand, then sometimes you got to take a hit. But if whatever you can do to make it as best you can without going bankrupt, you just got to do it. You know, if you got to yeah. eat 200 bucks, you got to eat 200 bucks, right? right. But if you got to, yeah, you got to, you got to do what's right by the customer because that customer is going to lead to the next one and the next one, the next one. And hopefully there'll be a client in the future if you handle it well. Yeah. I told this young buck, I said, listen, man, I remember I was on my hands and knees in this guy's backyard putting in his zoysia grass for the third time. Cause the fir- first time I put it in, we, uh, he didn't water enough. It died. Second time I put it in, we had a drought and he didn't water it enough and it died. And so I'm literally zoysia, zoysia side, 10 pallets of zoysia side for the third time. I lost thousands and thousands of dollars on the specific job. And then thousands and thousands more in opportunity costs. Cause like I'm working for free, you know, losing money working for this guy because I didn't have it in writing. Free shout out for uh, our resource center at greenindustrypodcast.com. Pick up our landscape contract. So uh, templates, this doesn't happen to you. I didn't have that back then. So Dumbbell Jr. over here said, oh, I'll guarantee it. You know what I mean? And I literally was crying, a grown man crying in this guy's backyard, Chris. And uh, tears dripping down my face. I was all emotionally just distraught, 
bent out of shape. And what happened though, and this is what I was telling this young kid. I said, listen, I learned a lesson in that guy's corner of his backyard crying because I realized, number one, I'm never going to guarantee saw it ever again. And number two, I was my price was way too low. I, I always priced a little bit higher now, factoring in something's going to go wrong. Just I'm going right. to I'm gonna charge you for it because something's going to go wrong. I don't know if it's going to be a, a flat tire or, or Pookie ain't going to show up or what. Something's going to happen that's going to crunch the number. And, and if I lose a job because my price is too high, I've come to the conclusion that's okay. Yeah, I'd rather that happen than it be like razor thin and everything's got to go perfect because it, it doesn't go perfect. It just it, it just right. is what it is. I pray that everything goes smooth as can be, and and I definitely try to set it up to go smoothly. But we're dealing with people, we're dealing with all kind of machinery, and and it's just you got to factor in something ain't going to work out. But um, right. Chris, let's let's pause for commercial break real quick. We'll kick it over to the best producer in the biz. And hear a word from today's show sponsor. And coming up, this is so good. We'll have more with Chris Hollis on how you can take your business to the next level. We'll be right back, folks. All righty. We are back with Chris Hollis from Pure Marketing. And uh, he had just shared a story of how they had a customer slip through the cracks and what you learned about that. So what else have you been learning about marketing and the economy we're in and just you know what we need to be doing to make sure we're getting the best customers moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. You know, times are tough when inflation hits, especially in trades and services. You know, there's a lot of trades and services that people got to have, right? Like maybe they're not going to put in the $20,000 patio that they planned on this summer, but they still got to get their grass cut, you know, especially in commercial properties and that kind of stuff. So like there's a little bit of a hedge of protection in a lot of ways, but at the same time, that means that, you know, those new contracts that are are due, they're going to go look for more pricing because they're going to try and save a dollar wherever they can. And so, yeah, you have to market yourself above the competition to say that you're worth those extra dollars, right? Because, you know, in the same way, you know, so Trifecta Landscaping, obviously, you know, I was the marketing director over there for a couple of years before we started peer marketing. On a pricing level from, you know, zero being basically doing it for free to 10 being way over the top or, you know, probably the highest dollar you can ask for a service in the industry, Trifecta is probably like a six or a seven, okay. right? But you got a lot of guys who are falling back to being three, fours, and fives now, just trying to make sure they can get business. It's the same problem is, you know, if you're going back to being a three, four, or five, then you're still doing more work for the same amount of money. You gotta cut back to just a couple of yards slower. That's okay because you're still working less. You need to keep your calendar full for sure. But mm-hmm. if you're just con- if you start lowering prices now, you're not going to be able to push them back up once the economy is over or once the recession's over, right? So, so you have to market yourself above the rest to prove you're actually work- worth it. So, example here, Trifecta just picked up a significant account because another company in town had to scale back, and they just couldn't keep up because of you know uh, labor shortage, because of you know pricing and everything else. They underbid it because they bid it before the reset. You know all these costs came up you know, in the last year or so. Mm-hmm. So they're like, hey, we're sorry, we'll back out, you know, fault kind of deal. I don't know how that deal worked out on their end, but the company went looking for another landscape company and they found Trifecta. And because of the website and because of the reviews and because of the photos and because of how we market ourselves and how we say, you know, we're, we want to be more than just people who cut your grass, they were really interested. And I think they went from the phone call to getting the contract in less, in less than a week. And it's a significant amount of work. I think I think we got half the properties to start with to make sure we did a good job. And just half of those is like 20 something properties. And so you're talking 40 to 50 properties for this company just off of our online presence. Wow. And so wow. if you if you can market yourself above the next guy and you can give some evidence that you're worth the extra couple dollars then people will be interested. That's why we're talking about how marketing is is not a spend. Like you can't think about marketing as I'm just going to put a thousand bucks a year toward this and just hope for the best. If you do it well, if you have a strategy, it will make multiple returns. You're talking about two, three, four, five times your return. And so you shouldn't spend all your money. You know, like we've been told by other marketing firms, like you should tell people they should spend 10% of their top line revenue marketing. I'm like, a guy making ninety k can't spend nine thousand dollars right. on marketing every year. It's like, but maybe they can do three percent, four percent, five percent. So trifecta spends right about five percent. Mm-hmm. It kind of fluctuates. You know, some years it's like three percent, and the next year it might be six because you know we bought more trucks and, or replaced trailers and they get wrapped. And so those are big marketing expenses. Whereas like the online stuff is not nearly as expensive. 
And so we tell guys like, you have to market yourself to make it look like you're worth the amount of money you're asking for. And most of the time, if you do it well, it works. And you can afford to do less work and make the same money or more money. So good. What's one piece of practical advice you would give to someone who's starting out with their marketing plan? Maybe they're like, you know what? I've just been getting the neighbor's referrals and, and, and Aunt Susie told me that her, you know, her neighbor Wanda needed me. And, and then Martha came out, you know, and they're like, you know what? I, I got to start getting, you know, no offense, Martha, but I got to start getting a little bit better customers here. They want to start off with marketing. What, what do you start? Because it can be intimidating with websites and Instagram and all this, you know, where, where do you get started, Chris? Yeah. So the first place I get started is your branding. When we say your branding is who you are, your marketing is how am I going to communicate? That's who I am. And advertising is the method that you spread that message, right? And so I always say, start with branding, you know, cause you can do it internally. And it's free just to just figure out who you really are and what your business is really about first. And then when it comes to the first steps of actually marketing yourself, do the free stuff first. Get on Facebook, get in for sale, one of groups, you know, get some referrals going. Because if you don't have any cash to spend yet, if you're year one, maybe year two, a weekend warrior, maybe the cash isn't there to pay out for, you know, something like a website or something like that for your first year. Year two, you absolutely need to invest in a website. Because that's how, because you can only expand your circle of friends so much, right? And it gets to the point where you've texted everybody, you've emailed everybody and your Facebook only goes so far. You got to take that next step. So talking about doing a website because anybody looking for your services in your area can find it. Same thing with doing some Google ads. You can just do, even if you just did one Google ad in spring for bringing in new clients, that in itself will pay for itself in multitudes. And then after that, you get into the, you know, the summer, you get into the fall, start advertising your fall cleanups. If you got snow doing that stuff, aeration season, you know, any service you have, you need to market those. If you can't pay for it, just put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, post every day or at least every couple of days. You really need to post every day. If you're doing it for free, you're really trying to hustle. But know who you are, do the free stuff first. And then the first thing you need to pay for is a website. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, is there anything we're leaving out here that needs to be addressed, Chris? You're looking good over there. You need to start doing some modeling to bring in some side cash. <laughs> I saw you modeling for uh, Team Lowe's today. Congratulations on that. Hey. Th thank you very much, man. It's exciting. When I started this podcast, you know, if, uh, you would have told me one day Lowe's be knocking on my door. I'd be like, what? We're super excited about that. But behind the scenes, guys, I, I went to the dry cleaner and I had this shirt. I just got off the, the phone with a, another large company and, you know, we're wheeling and dealing. And so I wanted to look my best. And that that, that actually means a lot. I know most of you guys are listening to this and, and you're used to seeing me with my shirt off at the pool, but, um, <laughs> I have, it's J crew. It's, it's a really nice shirt. Now I know why they say I took you to the cleaners. It was like $12. <laughs> I had three shirts. I had this one, a short sleeve shirt and another one like this. And I go to check out and she's like 12 bucks. I was like $12 for three shirts, man. I, I took it to the cleaners. I was like, I finally get it. That's why they say you got taken to the cleaners. Cause anyway, it's no wrinkles in it. It looks fresh. So, so look um, fresh, man. looking good. Yeah. And I think I landed the deal. You got to sign on the dotted line. So you don't want to count your chickens before they hatch. Things are lo looking pretty good. So I appreciate the compliment, but I, I definitely believe dressing well, you know, the customers notice that stuff if you yeah. well put together. So it's part of marketing. It's where I wore my pure marketing shirt for the interview. Yeah. Today, oh, that you know? looks real fresh. I can't come in with the, with the uh, GIE t-shirt that I use in the yard every day. <laughs> I, I love Mailer, a, a thank you letter for the t-shirt that I got that I wear almost every single day. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love those. Now guys, what he's talking about is every year Naylor puts on the best party of the year, uh, free food. It's going to be at copper and Kings distillery on Thursday, October 20th. I don't know, six o'clock PM or so it gets started. It goes till after dark. And uh, it's awesome. He gets sponsors so that all the food is free. So there's a buffet style food. A bunch of other of the sponsors will be there passing out free stuff. And then basically all the influencers in our industry go to this. So if you want to meet the lawn care juggernaut or SB Moen or Alex Kirby or, uh, you know, Mitch and, and uh, I'll hopefully be in the corner podcasting. That was a lot of fun last year. It was a lot of fun, but on, on a more serious note, you know, if you guys are looking to do any of this stuff, just go to the show notes, 
there'll be a link to our website. You can get a hold of us. It's a real simple process. You just fill out some basic contact info and I'll call you personally myself and just see where you're at and what you want to do. And we'll get you started on the next steps. And I promise I'll follow up with you and I won't lose you in the middle. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's talk about this. Marty's going to put the hyperlink in the show notes. If somebody wants a website, they click on that hyperlink. Does that take them to where they can schedule a call with you? Is that free consultation? Is that paid? Mm -hmm. Walk us through the next steps of, of going from the show notes to actually having a best practice website. Absolutely. So what you'll do is you'll hit the link in the show notes. It'll go to the Green Industry Podcast page on our website. You sign up on that contact form there. It'll automatically shoot me a notification. I'll give you a phone call. We'll schedule a phone call if you don't have the time to do it middle of the day. You know, we're all out there, you know, hustling, bustling. So we'll schedule around your calendar and then you and I will chat for about 20 minutes. I'll get a feel for what you're doing, where you want to go, what you want to do, give you an idea what the next, next step is. So let's say you want to get a website. I'll get you in contact with one of our web designers and then you'll go through the process with them. They'll do a quick orientation just to kind of give you an idea of what the process is going to be. And if you say yes, then we'll send you the contract. You would put in a deposit and then we go to work. And then depending on how full the, the queue is, could be probably as short as a month, maybe two months by the time you get a turnkey website done for you and you just pay the half of the deposit and it's yours and it's off and going. The SEO is done. Keyword research is done. It's attached to your Google My Business page. We can put a tab in there, leave a review. We can do all kinds of stuff. And so that's really kind of the process. It's real easy. It's real simple. That's fantastic. We guys can take a look at that in the show notes. Are you going to equip this year, Chris? We are absolutely going. Yep. Great. So we're we're doing the we're doing our due diligence, trying to see if we can get a booth. It's a little late for us to get a booth at this point. So I hope we'll be able to get something. But even if we don't get a booth, we'll definitely be there and shake some hands, say hello to everybody, see all of our favorite friends and family coming around, you know, up there to Louisville. And we'll be at all the fun things in the evenings too. So if you're cool. if you see us there wearing pure marketing shirts. Stop us. We'd love to say, hey. Fantastic. Well, you guys that need a website, maybe you don't have a website and you just need to get one, or maybe you got one of these raggedy websites that I used to have. Yeah. So anyway, if you want a legit uh, website, my guys at Pure Marketing can take care of you. Uh, Marty will put the link in the show notes. Just click on that. Hop on a call with Chris. Tell him your goals for your website. And in a matter of a month or two, which is a really good turnaround, uh, you can get a, a legitimate website. And actually, one of your customers that you suggested I interview on my podcast, his name's Eric Hill from Fayark Lawn Company. I just got to meet him in real life at his at his uh, farm when I, I was on tour in Arkansas. So I got to see his shop. His shop's on this gigantic farm. And uh, he showed me all that. And we made some Instagram reels that went viral. One of the videos has like 2.2 million views of him That's mowing awesome. grass. And it was a really cool connection. I, he's a young 21 year old. I think he's already a millionaire if I'm not mistaken. Between, between assets and yeah. And liquid stuff. Yeah. For sure. Home. Yeah. So kids just, you know, grew up literally milking cows, learned work ethic and, and then started serving customers, lawn care and landscaping needs at 21 years old. He's a millionaire. So I appreciate you connecting me with him. It's so cool to meet these guys out there that, uh, uh, have such a bright future. So, and of course his website looks awesome. So yeah, it does. <laughs> you guys build a really good one for him. All right, guys, I got to go. I'm looking fresh. Maybe I'm going to go get me a salad. There you go. <laughs> Try to eat clean. Keep looking good. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, and the guy's coming to fix the piano inside joke for friends of the show, but <laughs> <laughs> right. thanks, Chris. We'll catch you later, buddy. All right, man. Have a great day.